I'm thrilled to be here. I, uh, I actually, I was here at UVU and ready for this. So this is, this is a classic entrepreneur. Graphic design scholarship and finished with, with an associate in business and then transferred to BYU and studied industrial design, which is awesome. So it's the Bachelor of Fine Arts in the School of Technology. Yeah, see that right brain, left brain funniness? Whoa, that's probably a little close. How's it going? <laughs> um, so here's what I want to do. As any good marketer would, I want to know what's on your mind right now and have a lot of fun. I want to take you on a little bit of a journey uh, and just share some key principles and experience that I've learned over the past 16 plus years in startups and the, the craziness that it is, it, it feels so much, I'll never forget when I took my son on California screaming. You know, we're standing by the side, he's like, Dad, let's go do that. You know, oh, that looks so awesome. And we're standing there, I'm like, all right, bud. So we get in line, the closer we get in line, he's like, Dad, are you sure? <laughs> um, we can go do another ride. I'm like, no, buddy, I said, let's do it, you know? And then we get down there, <laughs> forget, it was so funny. So we sat down, he's like, Dad, I don't know if I wanna do this. <laughs> and then we pull out, you guys been on that ride? It's like, crazy because you're sitting there and all of a sudden it's just poof, you take off and I remember looking over at his face in just sheer terror like Whoa! <laughs> and then you go up and you're getting compressed and you go through these big loops and you're feeling this exhilaration and then you come down and it's just compounding your guts and you want to go into fetal position welcome to entrepreneurship and and then we finished the ride we finished the ride he's like dad can we go again <laughs> I'm like, I guess that what ha that's what's happened too. So I've, I've been a part of a couple of amazing companies and uh, from start to all the way through to exit and uh, building another really amazing little uh, startup right now. So I know what it's like. Um, but I wanna ask you guys, what's on your mind? What's a couple things that you really wanna know that's not, here, here's where I have, let me just get on a little bit of a soapbox. There is more content that's being produced than ever before. So I wanna make this meaningful. So you guys walk away with something that's really good. And so I need your help to do that. Is that fair? Okay. So a couple of things, and I'm not all about, here is, you know, anyway, here's my little soapbox. You, get, you see all over the online, here's 25 things to consider when you start your business. It's like, wait, what? 25? I'm good for three, bro. <laughs> you know, give me three ideas and that's it. So what I've done is I've given you, I'm gonna take you on this journey and I've met some really extraordinary people over the last little while. And I wanna share some key takeaways just three from each of them. So hopefully one will resonate with, uh, with each of you guys. Sound good? Okay, so any questions right off, right off the bat? What's on your mind? What do you wish that uh, someone would have talked about or shared prior to today? And maybe those that are gonna be doing this in the future can watch this and they can say, oh, I'll talk about that next time. Yeah. What struggles to expect? Ooh, that's a great question. I'm gonna write right over here. What struggles to expect? Okay, uh, another question. Yeah. Um, I know it's a long process to be an entrepreneur, but once you get your idea, how quick do you need to get going? Like, does that make sense? Yeah, so what you have your idea, how quick do I need to, 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 go, to go to market? Um, so idea, let go this, to market. Good question. One more, yeah. How much time do we have? <laughs> yeah. Structure in terms of how you create the business or how you create a partnership with another company or? Someone who has your clients and you want those clients to, how do you go make Oh, I like that, so partnerships. I'll actually talk a little bit about that because that's one of the things that the reason we were able to grow orange soda as fast as we were was leveraging other customers. So that's great. So I'm just talk, uh, I'll just put strategic partnerships. Is that good? Okay, awesome. What struggles? Oh man, <laughs> that's, that's a whole class in and of itself. So what I'll do is I'll try to hit on each of these as we go through the presentation. Sound good? I wanted to have a little bit of fun with this. Entrepreneur, I asked my, I actually have this little book by the Torin brothers. I don't know if you guys, they, they are authors of Kidpreneur. Um, we're actually working pretty close. They're just amazing people. And my, my daughter says, what's this book? And I said, it's um, how to be an entrepreneur. She's like, a what? I'm like an entrepreneur. So we just shortened it to TREP. So 
Treps, who are treps? You are. This is one of my favorite things. I love this, you know, this great definition, just to make sure that we are all starting on common ground, right? Sound good? You always start, here's a definition. Process of starting a business, because I thought that we were in biology for a minute with the periodic tables up on the side, I was a little nervous. Like, I'm not prepared to talk about, and uh, I'm not even gonna say it, because I'll probably blow it up. Those reticulums that are in, anyway. <laughs> Endoplasmic reticulums. I think I learned that right here. Uh, entrepreneurship, um, the process of starting something, but this is a really great from Wikipedia, right? But this is one of my favorites is what Michael Scott says. Wikipedia is the best thing ever. Anyone can write anything they want. So you know you're getting the best information, right? <laughs> so what I wanna do is I wanna have us to define entrepreneurship and ho hopefully most of you are here. How many of you wanna start a business? Everybody. And the other ones are here, they're like, wait, is this not a biology class? <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> um, so another thing that I want to make sure that we all have in common as we get started, I think we all want to be successful. And we all want to have success. And I think this, this little dude, what a studly picture. You know, if you've ever been to the beach, that, the next step is, it's already been in his mouth. That happens naturally if you guys have, just sand needs to go in the mouth. <laughs> so success, um, you know, the feeling of pure accomplishment, as I talked about my son at the end of that ride, it was as terrified as he was at the beginning of that ride, was as excited he, as he was at the end. So it was a lot of fun. I like this definition. What, is, what, what are some of your definitions of success? That's, I want to hear from you guys. Yeah. Achieving what you set out to achieve. Achieving what you set out to achieve. I like that. Achieving what you set out to achieve. That's great. That's pretty closely aligned with what I've got. Any other ideas? Yeah. Making a difference. Making a difference. You know what it's all about. It's all about making a difference, making an impact. Any other ones? I like those a lot. Yeah. Uh, making a good product that someone's willing to pay for. How about that? Making a good product that someone's willing to pay for. Because never in the history of Earth have we had more options to buy a great product, right? Oh, that's awesome. I like those. Those are all great definitions. I like this one. The continuous journey towards the achievement of predetermined worthwhile goals. So the achievement of achieving something. I really like that. Um, and here's, here's one of the challenges. I don't know if you guys ever think about this, um, but I remember I'm like, man, I'm trying to sit back in a, in a school context and really learn and understand and know what's the most important and what do I want to get out of my experience here? Um, I don't know if you guys have ever said this, but I have caught myself saying this, oh, it'll be so much better when I'm graduated. Oh, it'll be so much better when I, when I get my first job or when I start my first business, right? You guys probably said it's probably just me. Or, oh, things would be so much better if right? Or I can't wait until. Here's the interesting thing. We had a little fun with some rhythm and a beat at the very beginning. The chairs helped us, which I think was awesome. <laughs> um, but we all have something that's very unique. We all have rhythm and we're all, we all have, we're all a, a, this really cool vibe that's in, within each of us. Just put your hand right here for a second. Check it out. Pretty cool. So everyone said, you can become an entrepreneur. And what is that? It's really changing and making something better. <clears throat> Daring to create. And you don't have to wait. You don't have to wait until whenever. So I want to tell some trap stories that will hopefully be meaningful. And some of these people you'll probably recognize. Maybe a few you won't. Um, but these are people that, as I've met them, had an impact on decisions that I made whether it was hiring or whether it was part of a, a huge decision that we had to make as a company, I thought about some of these lessons. So that's what I wanted to share with you is some key entrepreneurial lessons, less about just sharing some experience, but hopefully it will help you. And then finally, and the most important, is taking action. So we talked about a beat. I really like that. You guys have, you know, say, I, keep, I don't have rhythm. One of the funnest things, I played in a band when I was 18 years old, and that was a riot. I was the drummer. And so as you know, as the drummer, you have to keep the rhythm for the entire team, and the entire the t team, the entire band, right? And they're all counting on and relying on you to make sure that you don't mess something up. And so I thought about that. I set the tempo. I set the cadence for everything and for that rhythm. And so that's what was so fun just to see how you guys how you guys worked and, and be a part of that. So we all have a beat as you think about that. We all have something to contribute somewhere, somehow, to someone. Anyone know these guys? The Wright brothers? 
they were just naturally inclined to fly, right? No, who knows what they did? They had a bicycle store. Isn't this cool? You see this big chain running back here? <laughs> who wants to come jump on my bike that has wings? <laughs> but I also love this. So you think about a beat, but you also, we can beat a record. Whenever someone sets, hey, here's the new record, isn't it interesting how we continually strive to beat it? And nothing was possible until someone did it. Isn't that extraordinary? So think about this beat and think about this vibration that each of us has. Because we all have rhythm, we all have beat. But I also like broken that down to be at. Beat, be at your best. That's one of the things that I think we can all learn as entrepreneurs. Is being at our best. Because there are some times when you're just coming around through that loop and you get compressed. And you're like, how are we going to get through this? Somehow you make it. So I want to share seven. There's seven people. Um, there's actually six people. And then I'll share just a few of my ideas that I've learned that are tried and true from business practices and, and companies that I've been a part of. And frankly, companies that I've seen in San Francisco, Chicago, New York, uh, and, and everywhere in between. Um, talk about some people, some key principles, and then share a few process ideas. And more than anything, give you some purpose. So this is the first one. I had the opportunity just last week to be here with President Holland. And I will just tell you this. What an extraordinary opportunity to be at this university. Think of how much he's done. And here's just some of the key statistics that I pulled up. He's built a culture of excellence. And he hasn't been here for very long. Think about what he's done. UVU is on the map. Utah County is on the map in a big way, and we have him to thank. Culture of excellence, engaged learning. I absolutely love this. The idea of learning by doing and experiencing. I don't know about you, but that's, that's how I learn, is by, no, someone can show you how to do it, but the reality of saying, sit down and now do this, is how it really happens in a business. I love this too, just a really interesting statistic. Uh, the number of degrees awarded, in 2009, 34, and then uh, 3,400, and then in 2014, 5,200. And that number is going to continue to rise. It's awesome, and it's under President Holland's leadership. The fact that he said culture is so important. I am incredibly passionate about culture. And you ha there are so many different definitions and ideas of culture. And we can spend a little bit more time, if you want, on culture and building the right culture. But I'll tell you, as Mark mentioned, we grew really fast. But one of the things that we realized as a business is we, genuinely, we loved who we worked with. We loved what we did and the economics were right in that order. How many of you guys know people that make a lot of money but hate what they do, right? Oh, they dread waking up every day. Every morning, I still to this day wake up curious and asking questions and trying to solve problems. It's so much fun, right? But think of just really interesting. So I love that whole, that whole idea and that whole concept. Uh, the guy next to me, his name is uh, Greg Whiteley. I don't know if you've heard of his, his Sundance Film Festival winner, Most Likely to Succeed. Check out the trailer. Um, that's the URL. Um, it talks about, it, it's, it's a phenomenal uh, new movement around education and learning by doing and literally getting experience and this whole experience-based learning of creating and developing and understanding your strengths. I love this whole idea. And he really is challenging the status quo. If you think about it, education hasn't changed for the last 120 plus years. Where you come into a setting like this and you listen to someone just speak and talk and you take notes as fast as you can. But I'll tell you, people that we've hired and people that we look to bring on to our team are people that are natural problem solvers, that are curious, that want to solve a problem, that want to figure something out. Because when you go into the work environment of Several years ago, it was very much, here's, here's what we're going to do, just like you do in a classroom, but things are really starting to change and evolve, and we're going to see some pretty amazing things over the next few years that relates to education. That's why the startup that I'm working on right now pertains specifically to education. Because the interesting thing was, I was building a framework for my son. Because I want him to learn these key business principles over the last 15 years that he's not going to learn in school. And so I start putting together this framework for him. Tons of fun. More to come on that. Um, I don't know if any of you guys, you guys know who Scott Harrison is? 
Probably not. Doesn't go out there and beat his chest a lot. He's a phenomenal human being. And I'll tell you a little bit about his story. So Scott started Charity Water. I don't know if you've heard of uh, Charity Water. He had advanced in his career to a point where he's just completely burned out, said, I've had it, I'm done. And he left and went to Africa where he was then photographing, uh, pho photographing um, little kids' faces that had major challenges and, and uh, required surgery of some sort. And he realized that the majority of these challenges were coming from the water. And so he decided that he was gonna make a difference, that question. He was gonna make an impact, bless you. <clears throat> um, I love his perspective on people. When he showed up there, his heart was just completely turned around to think, how have I been given so many opportunities and yet these kids just want a normal life? And he said, I'm gonna change tomorrow and I'm gonna make a difference. And so he started that. His perspective was totally changed and everything around his business is now focused on purpose. As you think about starting your business or whatever it may be, yes, having is one of the questions, I mean, having an incredible product is critical. But asking yourself, here, here's the other thing. Most, most business people, when you say, hey, tell me, about, tell me about your business. What do you do? What do they jump into? Here's what we do and here's how we do it. You know what I ask people? Why are you doing it? Simon Sinek, anyone listen to that TED talk? He's phenomenal, starting with why. And that's an important question. Why do you want to be entrepreneurs? Why are you here right now in a classroom setting? And what do you hope to learn? I'll tell you some of the best advice that I ever received was from a doctor in Alabama. <laughs> and it was, it was, I was getting ready to start, my, uh, start college. He said, if you prepare yourself as though you had to teach the lesson, you'll do really well in school. That was some of the best advice I ever got, because guess what, it's really up to us, not up to our professors, not up to our teachers. I see that same thing within business too, where people are hired, it's like, all right, what are you gonna do for me? You got a ping pong table? Cool, when's lunch coming? Um, and what else is going on? Versus people that just come in and said, you know what? I don't care what I do, I just wanna be a part of this company, and I wanna make it happen. I've hired people like that, one of them, um, he's awesome. He came up to me, he says, hey, Derek, you don't really know who I am now, but you will. And I'm like, awesome. He was on our sales team. He now is the head of Google Fiber for Utah. He's a phenomenal human being, Devin Bear, love him a ton. Um, but that kind of attitude, I, I absolutely love. So that's, again, think about purpose. This is what Scott taught me. I don't know if you guys know Gary V. You know Gary? I've seen some of his Amazing talks, warning, there are some expletives, and so that's why I put it right here. But let me tell you, um, I had the opportunity to meet Gary at an Inc. 500 event when he had just uh, released his book called The Thank You Economy, and it was amazing. One of my favorite stories, so he started, it was called Wine Library, where he'd review wines, and he got a huge order from a customer, and, uh, he found this customer on social media and said, thanks so much for your order. Found out that he was a huge hockey fan, ordered him a jersey and said, thanks for your order. Guess what happened? When he went and ordered wine from somewhere else again, where do you think he went? <laughs> and blew it up all over social media. Check this out, I ordered this and these guys just gave me this jersey. That's the thank you economy and that's what we're transitioning into. Because if you want to see, I'm going to, I'll share my key three Ds. You'll write this down, bold. These are Derek's. I'll share these at the very end. But this is when everyone, what's your differentiator? What makes, you, what makes you different? How do you distinguish yourself? This is one of the things that I love about Gary is it's all about the experience and saying thank you. So when I met him, you know the first thing I said to him? I walked up and I said, Gary, thanks. Thanks for your inspiration and motivation more than anything. I've never met a dude with more passion in my life than Gary. He's unbelievable. <laughs> and I've never seen anybody that hustles faster than he does. He's awesome. Appreciate Gary from an entrepreneur standpoint. Many of you guys have probably seen Barbara. See her on Shark Tank now. She is amazing. 
and just a, a, a genuine human being. It was so awesome just to see her and say, hey, can I get a picture with you after we had a, some short dialogue? But the thing that I, I, I really like about Barbara is, and how many of how many of you guys know her story? Really interesting, right? And this is, this is what it's all about. Taking chances is kind of epitomizes her story. Taking chances almost always makes for happy endings. I love that. But this is what I learned from Barbara. She failed at 22 jobs. <laughs> You don't hear about that because we, we see the successes. And frankly, this is one of the challenges that I have within our current environment, not only from school, but to work. What is it? It's a fear-based environment. Oh, I can't go and talk to my CEO. I can't go and approach him and tell him that I can't solve this problem. Let me tell you what, I had an extraordinary experience in the late 99s, early 2000s, a little dot-com startup. If many of you remember, you can check out history. That was like a crazy time when everyone was throwing money into once you had a dot com at the end of your business name. And then the bubble burst. I'll never forget showing up there, and I was so excited. I just closed a significant partner deal for our company. And the next day we said, pulled everyone in this family room and said, hey, guess what? We're out of money. Oh. I think that's a problem, right? <laughs> so I, I went home that night. I'm like, what am I going to do? I just closed this deal with this guy. So I went back in the next day, and I saw four or five other people there. And I'm like, what are you guys doing here? They're like, what are you doing here? I said, I'm going to take care of this customer. And they said, we're taking care of our customers too. Next thing we knew, this, the CEO was there too. And we weren't cleaning out our stuff. We continued to work. A lot of us worked for free for months. We grew to 25% a month, month over month, and we ended up being acquired. And I'll tell you what was really amazing was my, right before I graduated, that same, my final semester of college to have an exit was extraordinary. But let me tell you what, we didn't fear failure. And when you think about what we're, what's pounded into our brains, don't fail, don't fail, don't fail. Guess what happens along the way when you fail? Your mistakes are much, more visible and you realize what you need to do. And when people say fail, fail fast, because failure sounds like it's so horrible. But I love this statement my business partner and I have been talking about, getting to the end of the wrong road fast. Because then guess what? You know the road that you're gonna go down next is going to be right. Isn't that cool? That's a super powerful principle. Learning by doing. That's engaged learning. So I love that perspective from Barbara to say, look, it doesn't matter how many times you've failed before. It doesn't matter where you've come from. Who's to say you can't do it now or tomorrow? I also love that she took $1,000 and turned it into $5 billion. That's all right. <laughs> Pretty extraordinary. Those are some lessons from Barbara. How many of you guys know David Nealman? Okay, how many of you guys have uh, watched TV on an airplane before? That came from David Nealman. How many of you have learned, have used an electronic ticketing system for your air, airline ticket? That's David Nealman. How many of you have, uh, let's see, talked to a real human being for customer service and they're amazing and bright and smart? He was one of the first to do this kind of outsourced customer service model for really, really smart stay-at-home moms and crushed it. True innovator. His daughter, we were fortunate enough to have her work at Orange Soda, and he was out on a ski trip at Deer Valley, and we asked if he would come and speak to our team. And he carved out of his time uh, the opportunity to come down and speak to all of us, and I'll never forget it. It was remarkable. He is one of the most extraordinary human beings ever. He started Morris Murdoch Air. Their travel agency still exists. But he took a commoditized, something highly commoditized in industry, some highly commoditized industry, right? Flying and airplanes, and made it better. How do you make it better? Well, he's not getting better fuel. They all use the same fuel. They all use the same aircraft. So what's your differentiator in that kind of an environment? Service. Someone say it? It's your service. It's the experience that you have. This is what I learned from David Nealman. 
your, everyone talks about customer experience. Guess where it starts? Your employees have got to become ambassadors. I love this. He says your employees, those that you're investing in, are your ambassadors. They are your brand. They should ooze your brand. And guess where it starts? Just like President Holland. Starts at the top with him. You know when, when uh, he, so he went to Brazil. Anyone know what he's doing right now? David Nealman started Azul Airlines. The reason you haven't heard about it because he's focused on a very specific niche and he's absolutely crushing it. Making travel affordable in Brazil and providing a world-class experience. They don't have first class. In fact, JetBlue, which he started, does not have first class. Um, when he walks on the airplane, I'll tell you what, their whole experience overall is amazing. When you're in New York, if you ever get a chance to see the JetBlue terminal, it's really pretty cool. Um, when he gets on the airplane, he doesn't sit down and just say, put in my headphones and start working away. I've got so much to do. I'm the CEO of this big company, right? You know what he does? He puts an apron on, walks up and down the aisles and serves the customers that are on there because guess what? You don't have a business without your customers. And that's the one thing that David taught me. And if you want your customers to have a great experience, your employees have to have a great experience. And they have to love what they do, love who they work with, and the economics have to be right in that order. That's the one thing that I learned from him. Also, he taught me a powerful lesson of flawless execution, which means if people ask you something, respond. Be responsive. Because most of the time, especially today, the real key differentiator is very, very small. But small things multiplied by time equal real results. And that's what I learned from David. And if you ever have a challenge with a customer, guess what? You make it right, and you do whatever you can to make it happen. You know what? JetBlue, <laughs> the reason he's no longer at JetBlue is because they had, a whole, they had a major catastrophe in the Northeast, and it grounded a whole bunch of planes, and customers were stuck. And you know what he did? He proposed, he said, we're gonna refund every single customer that flew with us that day, and we're gonna give them a travel voucher. And guess what? Wall Street didn't like that. Neither did his board, neither did anyone else. They said, what? We can't afford to do that. So, okay, I'll go start another airline. <laughs> <laughs> and he's crushing it because he's doing this. Amazing, I love that. And the, 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 the final piece for Mint that I absolutely loved is create a business that people adore. Anyone know Wayne Rogers? Probably know who Wayne Rogers is in that picture. He's the dude in the middle right here. I don't know if any of you are old enough to remember when you actually had to get up off the couch and go to the TV and turn the dial. Who's with me? Okay, there's like two of us. Okay, cool, I'm really old. <laughs> MASH was a TV show, and he was Trapper John. Do we need to do that other exercise? I can hear those chairs going back. Let's try it, one more. All right, everybody back. And forward, clap. All right, good, we're good. So I went back, this, this guy, Jake, he's amazing. We worked together at Orange Soda. We were putting together a big strategic partnership. And this is Josh, who lives in New York. Amazing, amazing individual as well. I was at dinner with one of our strategic partners. And they said, Derek, we really need you to come over and help us at this place. I said, okay, give me the address. So I type it in my phone, I start walking down. And as I walk in, it's Kleinfeld Bridal which is say yes to the dress. I don't know if any of you guys, I mean, it's one of my favorite shows. I'm just kidding. Um, so I'm like, I have no idea what this is. So I walk in, there's all these warning signs. Hey, you may be on camera. I'm like, sweet. I'm like, where are we meeting? So we walk downstairs, meet with these guys. So this is, this is the partnership piece. The, the question that was asked earlier about how do, you, how do you start strategic partnerships? One of the things that we did is we actually leveraged, rather than building and hiring our own sales team, what we were selling at Orange Soda so many businesses need and so we rather than hiring a sales team we actually partnered with those who already had the relationships and we did it white labeled it was awesome and so i was we were here meeting with these guys and because it was a white labeled relationship which means they didn't know we were necessarily from orange soda but we were supporting their company um he asked us he said so where are you guys from he goes he goes josh i know you're here in new york where are you two from I'm like, I'm not gonna lie, I'm telling the truth, because that's one of the other commitments that I made early on, it's always best. I said, we're, in, we're from Utah. He said, that's where we have our online marketing operation to support you know, this company. And he said, wait, 
from Utah? And I'm like, oh boy, here it comes. <laughs> uh, he said, you guys came all the way out here from Utah? I said, yeah, for this meeting? Yeah. Utah? <laughs> the reason he asked is because he has a home up in Deer Valley. He says, how far are you from Deer Valley? All of a sudden the whole conversation changed and I'm like, oh, let off a huge big sigh of relief. And then towards the end of the conversation, it went really well. He's like, I can't believe you guys came out from Utah. He says, we've got something for you guys. So we wrap up the meeting, we walk downstairs, and uh, all of a sudden this tailor comes out and starts measuring us. And the three of us got suits. And these aren't just your average everyday suits. They were extraordinary. And uh, that was an experience that I'll never forget. I learned a couple key lessons there. Always tell the truth in business. <laughs> Always, no matter how hard or how painful it may be. Be open, be honest, be upfront. It's the best thing. And by doing that, you may get a suit out of it. Who knows? <laughs> um, here, so here are some things that I just want to share with you as, as, we, as we wrap up here. And it, there's three Ds that I'd call them. Maybe you can say that it's all about the drum too and the rhythm. You can remind, remember it that way, but I think we remember in three things. Distinguish yourself. What is your distinguishing factor? What makes you different? How can you utilize your strengths and your abilities to be better? And this is what I mean by standing out and then being able to demonstrate that ability, so, right? So you distinguish, hey, here's what we're gonna do, here's how we're gonna solve that problem, but then most importantly, how do you demonstrate it? This is making and keeping commitments. I'll tell you a great example of this, just go through a drive-through and look at the pictures that they have on the menu and then open up your little surprise when you get it and see how closely aligned that is. There are very few companies that do that well metaphorically speaking, right? So when you buy a product or service, make sure you're delivering on that experience. So demonstrate that. We are going to do this, which means guess what? You need to do that and follow through on it. And then the last thing, what very few people do, and I'm not talking about sunny delight, I'm talking about actually delighting a customer. I'll tell you one of my favorite experiences was I walked over, I didn't spend much time, I tried to walk around and spend time with our teams and I just happened to find, she wouldn't even say it, but one of her people who were sitting next to her said, check this out. One of our customer service reps was an incredible artist, and she just got off the phone call with one of her customers who was super sick, wasn't feeling very well at all. And so she had hand-drawn a card, she said, and basically just with a nice little note that said, hey, when you're not well, neither are we. Hope you get better soon from Orange Soda, and mailed it off to her. It's small things like that, you guys, that make the biggest difference in business. If you want to be different, delight customers. I don't think we have time, but these are, again, highly commoditized brands that have given an, an amazing experience. I'll share just one. Flight, for whatever reason, never happens when you travel, right? Flights change and then you have to book a hotel and it's everyone else is trying to book a hotel as well. I ended up staying at this place and uh, at the Marriott and I found this handwritten note on my bill the next morning. What did I do? Took a picture of it, shared it on social networks. Guess what happened? Three of my friends said, we're headed to that same hotel next week. Guess where we'll be staying? That dude couldn't have written that note. He could have been on social media his own, himself, right? But he took an extra minute just to delight a customer and that was extraordinary. What do they say about timing? Timing's everything, right? So if we all had a DeLorean and we had a flux capacitor, which by the way, it's 2015 and hoverboards are here, right? It's gonna happen next month where Marty goes forward. I almost wore my pair of Nike lace-ups, but I thought I'd wear something else as well. But, um, and I can't wait for that auto drying jacket. Those are so cool. Um, but here's the, here's the reality, you guys. This is the challenge I wanna get. Go make something happen. I love Seth Godin. And I want to end with this. I want each of you guys to answer these questions based on what you've learned and what you've heard today. Where will you go? What will you do? Why will you do it? How will you do it? And who will join you? As you're walking out, as you're leaving this room, you'll all go about whether it's the same thing, but we all have a decision to make. Am I going to make an impact? Can I make an impact? Why am I going to do this? If I want to start a business, why? Why is it that you want to do it? And who are you going to convince to join you? Everyone asked me what are some of my favorite books. Here's a few recommended reads that I'll give to you guys. Um, Outliers Extraordinary, Tony Shea, Zappos. Has anyone been down to Zappos and gone on one of their tours? 
If you're ever in Vegas, go check it out. Their culture is super extreme and crazy, but guess what? They're not a shoe company, they're a service company, and they're fanatical about taking care of customers, and that's what I love about Zappos. These are all, these are great books. Here's how you can get a hold of me. Again, as you think about it, as you leave this room, we all have big intentions and we have big ideas, but what are you going to do next? And why? Why are you going to do it next? Because I'll tell you what, you guys, one of the most extraordinary opportunities I've ever had has been, we literally just had a reunion for people who don't work anymore. They just moved offices back to, to, uh, to Kansas City and, and we still get together with some of our former employees and I can't tell you how great it is to see them. The relationships and the memories, no matter what technology we have, that's what lasts forever. You guys have been awesome. Thanks so much for having me. If you've got any questions, let me know. Okay, sweet. Okay, we have some time for some additional questions. So I'm gonna go into this, and then if you guys have any other ones, what struggles are there? Man, it's hard to even say what struggles aren't there. Um, probably I was talking to my business partner and, and there's, ch there's times in business where you literally you go into like fetal position and you're like, this has to end. One time, I will tell you one of my, one of the coolest things ever, we never missed a payroll at Orange Soda. We were within 48 hours of doing so. And that was a struggle and that was a scary time. But guess what, we all came together and we figured it out. That's a really simple answer for what really happened because there's a whole bunch of criteria that has to be built below, including when all new employees would start, I'd spend almost a half a day with them and help them understand why we're starting our business. Yeah, why we're doing it, what we're doing and how we do it. And I wanted to find out what they were gonna do and how they contributed. That was critical to me because these are the people that are gonna be talking to our customers. So your culture is everything. But as you guys go in, to these businesses, yeah, there's gonna be struggles. It's just like, think about this. Any new job, any new school year is like the beginning of the year when you set New Year's resolutions. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna make this happen. And then all of a sudden you start going, you're like, woo, it's a lot harder than I thought, right? There's gonna be struggles, just be prepared for them. But again, if you're honest and you're candid and you're forthright, you can usually get through the struggles. Where there's a lack of communication and a lack of trust, that's where struggles get really hard and really really ugly. So as you go in to a job or you start, as you select partners, make sure you're trustworthy first and that you can be trusted. Um, so you have an idea, how do you take it to market? Was that the question, right? I have an idea, I wanna take it to market, how much, kind of that time? You really have to see, had we tried to start an online marketing and SEO company now, that would be really tough. We saw a market because we understood and we knew it. And so being able to capture that timing I think is, is, is critical. So look at where's their, where their pain that needs to be solved, and now with the amount of resources that you have through outsourcing and through development and through all these other, where you can pull in the best of, from the world, it's an extraordinary opportunity. So again, fail fast, and what I mean is going down the end of the, go find the end of the wrong road fast and get to market, and make sure you have customers that believe in what you're doing. That's the best, I could spend a whole, a whole time on this. Strategic partnerships, um, there was a question about how do you put those together? Um, really, it's like this. Our partners, I was, I was more interested in their success than I was our own. And all of a sudden, when you do that, this magical thing happens where they believe you. And if you're, again, you're delivering and you're distinguishing and you're delighting, right? And you're demonstrating that difference, something happens with that partnership versus when you say you're gonna do something and it doesn't happen. And then what happens? Then you start to lose trust and it just doesn't work very well. So hopefully that helped. I can spend, again, a whole class period just on these three questions. Any other questions? Yeah, question over here. How do you stay motivated through the financing process while you're developing uh, the financial backbone to be able to develop a product? When you're developing a product, you've got the product to kind of keep you motivated. The challenges of actually developing the product that uh, you want to get out to market. But then there's the challenges before you can develop the product is the financing. How do yeah. you stay motivated through that, through Ooh. the failures of Unsuccessful financing. Not when you're yeah. at a large scale and you can go on a Kickstarter, you can say, This is what we're going to do, everyone back. Yeah, yeah. Back to you. 
Well, when you're small, when you're nobody, and you want to make something like the solar power wheel or something. That's a great question. There's a lot of questions in that one. So I'll take, I'll take the one question, which is, how do you stay motivated through that process? Because it is, it is long, and it is arduous, and it is super distracting, and takes so much time as you go out to raise money. That's the big failure that I think kills everybody. That's exactly right. So again, from the very beginning, if you have your why solid and demonstrated, Again, we were out of money in, in one of the first companies that I joined. I'm like, this company is going to be sweet. We've got a dot com at the end of our name, and we're going to take over the world. And 45 days later, we were out of money. And you know what we did? We knew what our why was. I guess that works. We understood our why. And we trusted and collaborated with one another that we said, no matter what happens, we're going to get through it. And the biggest thing, I think, how do you stay motivated through that? Satisfaction is a function of expectation. If your goal is just to raise money and to then be, okay, good, we're good, we got money, guess what? That's when the rubber really hits the road. If you think it's hard just trying to raise that initial capital, that's one challenge. But then when you actually do it, guess what? You have to have that cadence and sync to make sure that you're going to deliver on it. So how do you stay motivated? Saying, that's where we're going, and I know it's going to be dang hard. The one piece of advice I'll give you for any of you that are married, have a significant other or anything, if you're going to start a business, calibrate the expectation now. <laughs> My amazing wife has been through so much. And I'll tell you what, from the very beginning I said, hey, hon, I said, if you don't see me till 7.30 or 8 at night, understand. It's not that I love you any less, but I'll tell you what, I had some other criteria that I created. I said, I'm going to give it everything I got, but then I also made time for her specifically. But again, satisfaction is a function of expectation. I think that's probably how you stay motivated through the whole thing. Any other questions? Is that in? You guys are awesome. Please send me a note.